I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Latin America. I have been talking to a number of people who work in the relocation and travel abroad and, and living around the world space on a regular basis because that's what we do. And in doing so, uh, it came up that we keep coming across these businesses that try to make their money by selling services to help you move abroad. And I don't really understand what is driving people to be interested in them. And this is where I need you guys to help me out. I need some, some vision from you to help understand what it is that people need, not because we're going to be selling anything, because we are not, but I want to figure out what's missing. What is it that people need that is not out there in, or is not in a form that people can use, right? So let's get to that bump and figure out from you, and maybe from me, what we need to make the potential for moving abroad, something that you feel confident in, that you aren't missing some resource. All right, so I plan to do a future video where I break down why it's theoretically, basically impossible for anybody to actually have broad relocation information. And, and I can just tell you real quickly a few things that are super important. One is that to do so in a meaningful way would be outrageously costly and there just isn't that much money to be made in the relocation space. So there's a fundamental breakdown of economics for businesses to do this, right? It just, it just doesn't work. And so in theory, you might be able to focus on simply going after the ultra rich and trying to come up with a concierge service for them where they're willing to spend outrageous amounts of money for you to basically be a travel consultant. But if you're ultra rich, you have concerns that are so wildly different than normal people that any normal person probably can't provide useful information for you. But maybe they can, I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of people, and this is why I originally was thinking about offering a relocation consulting because I've been a consultant most of my life. I tend to have done a lot of things that other people haven't done. I've lived so many different places. I've relocated so much. I've done so much research. I've been so intentional in becoming an expat that uh, I feel like I had something to offer to people. Um, but the more that I see people who are doing this, every single thing that I see is very instantly and very obviously to some degree a scam or greasy salesman, right? And, and it made me feel really badly about thinking about doing something like that. So I've completely backed off on it. I don't do it because anything now I understand like, oh, can you show me around your tech? Yeah, yeah. You want me to like do something really specific for you in a very personal way? That's a different thing, right? But when it comes to like how to relocate, let's be honest, every bit of information that could be useful out there, I can give to you on a video. So if, if I can provide that information. I'm just going to do so. I'm not going to charge you for it. If you want to make a donation, if you want to buy me a coffee, that'd be fantastic. Like say thank you if it was useful to you, right? Great. But I'm not going to charge people for this. First of all, a lot of the people who need to relocate are doing so because of budgetary concerns. And that doesn't mean that, uh, and I know some of you guys will jump on and be like, no, 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 Scott, we'll pay you because you'll make our lives cheaper. I understand that you'd be willing to do so, but there's a problem, right? Either uh, one, I have to hold back this information and be like, okay, you got to pay me for this advice and then I'll release it to you. And that's what I'm, I'm looking at this. I was sent this thing to look at today, this live abroad program bundle and it has all this secret information and they put all these fancy brand names on like a checklist for moving abroad. Like, okay. And, and so I'd have to keep all this stuff secret and then you pay me and then you find out if it's useful at all. Right. And, and, just what's useful to one person is not useful to another. So it, does not, it doesn't work that way. And so that would be terrible. And I'd have to not give the advice for free on the channel or else what would be the point of the, the thing, right? And I don't want to not do that. What about the people who can't afford it? Or what about the people that it's a burden and they, they have to take a risk just to find out if it's useful to them? And why would anyone hold back good information just to make money on it? Okay, I kind of understand why some people would, but I, I certainly wouldn't. I can't do that. I don't do that in my IT life. I don't do that in my educational life. I don't do that in any professional setting. I don't know anyone who's good in any field who does that. So doing that here doesn't make sense either. And actually, I do think this is a great guide for you. If someone is looking to charge you for the basic information, 
needed for like relocation, they don't have it. They're only charging you because they don't have good information. If they had good information, they'd want it to be public because, you know, come watch us on YouTube, right? It, it's way better to just get uh, YouTube views and, uh, and that kind of stuff than to uh, deal with it. Like, right, like you, you just do it for free. That's what, and this is the same thing, right? You work in software, software engineering, IT advice, nothing good do you pay for it. Now, if you need a consultant to come in and speak to you and spend time one-on-one -on -one and say, okay, tell me your stuff and I'm going to help you process that information. That's different. And in any field, right, it's, it's fine to hire a programmer. It's fine to hire. It's good. You better hire an IT professional if you're, you're a business. And if you want a one-on-one -on -one relocation consulting service, sure, if you can find someone who's good, that's absolutely fine. But when it comes to basic information, if it's valuable, ever, anyone who believes they have value, they will want to make it free because that's how people find out that they have value in the first place. This stuff drives me crazy. So, so before we get going, my, my real question for you guys, and, and I really want, if you could, to make a video question, all the information is in the, in the show notes, go down there and make, but if you just write in a question, that would be great too. And I want to know, not about Nicaragua, you, you're welcome to ask Nicaragua questions, of course, but I don't want to know specifically in this video, what about Nicaragua is a problem. I want to know what about relocation is something that you don't know how to do, what next step you, you need help with. Because all these people, all these big resources seem to be making this attempt to make their money on, on helping people with like super basic things like you should sell your belongings and you should book a trip and you should go take a vacation and investigate some places but some of these things are different for different people right if you're if you're super rich none of this applies if you're super poor a lot of it doesn't apply you need to make some really strong decisions before but if you have like a middling income then do these other things but what's your passport that changes all these things as well so all these factors have to be considered uh, and so these checklists and stuff, they don't mean anything. They're worthless. Right? They have to be. But I want to know from you guys, what do you need? Right? Is there like a checklist we should put together? Let's do that. And then just have it as a, a, a website or, you know, as a video, both, whatever. Right? And we can keep it up to date and we can discuss it and get feedback from the public, not from only people who've paid. Right? And then, all, and then no one knows if other people are giving feedback. Uh, anything that someone, if there's something you feel you need to pay for, are you tempted at all to be going to some service to get information? I want to know what that is because I want to make sure we're offering that for free and better than anyone else. And that's it, right? Because it makes me upset that a lot of you are being preyed on or, or people are attempting to prey on you uh, with this ridiculous stuff. Oh, come to a conference, come, come get our packet, uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. And people are trying to promote themselves as these experts. So I'm going to do an entire video as to why there can't be an expert, right? There just isn't, that does not exist. And like, I'm reading these things from these people are like, we have so much experience. They've lived in one eighth as many countries as me. They've been living abroad for only about 75% as much time as me. Uh, they haven't made as much relocation material as me, and I can't be an expert. So if I'm not able to be an expert, given the amount of time I have, how are they experts with less? And they don't have the years of planning that I did. Uh, so so mine's, my total experience is about double. And I've helped people, to even before I relocated, I was helping people to relocate. Uh, friends, and you know, not, not as a service. Um, and one of the things that I've learned is that nobody can have the expertise that, that these people are claiming. And the one place that I'm going to pick on, because it's not who I'm looking at here, is Nomad Capitalist. And one of the reasons that this is important to pick on, Nomad Capitalist does an amazing job. Sometimes they actually have good videos, right? Like I'm not saying they don't. They do an amazing job of promoting themselves as being experts, much like big accounting firms in the United States. I have people sometimes come in and quote accounting firms in the United States to me about Nicaragua. And I'm like, what do you think makes this random intern working at a Fortune 500 in Chicago have any information about Nicaragua, let alone more than all of us who live on the ground? And how does doing remote 
investigation, like look at, looking at websites, give you the kind of information that you need versus actually finding out what really happens, right? They read an online website that says, you know, there's a 5% tax on buying a house in the, on the ground. You're like, well, there's actually the, all these separate taxes, but they vary to pay, depending on this discussion. And they, you know, they can be from 1% to 10%, all depending on who's representing you. These are things you need to know, right? Like you can't just say it's 5% and then put it into a matrix and, and, and ignore that it doesn't work that way. Right, but that's what they want to do, and it makes them look like an authority. And they're really commonly doing this with law firms and accounting firms in the US making information about countries abroad. And looking at Nomad Capitalist, I found the same thing. One, just looking at their info page on Nicaragua, it's all wrong and like really easily demonstrably wrong. Like, there's been people on my show who are dual citizens that Nicaragua gave them citizenship in the last couple of years, uh, and they're previously British citizens, they still have both, right? Well, Nomad Capitalist says that doesn't exist. So they're basing a bunch of their decisions, a bunch of their recommendations about where to live based on misinformation. Now, I'm sure they pulled it from somewhere. I'm sure they didn't just make it up. They're not trying to be wrong. They're just not putting in any effort. They're not asking. They're not checking. They're not here. And so, and as far as I know, never been here, right? Maybe, but it's unlikely. And that's fine. I've never been to Malaysia. I can't tell you anything about Malaysia. I can look up on a website and say what it says, but does that website reflect what it's really like on the ground? I don't know, right? Because I'm not there. I don't have staff there. So I can't provide that kind of assurance for there, but it also means Nomad Capitalist can't provide that kind of assurance for here. The difference is I don't put up a website pretending to be a resource for Malaysia, but they do for Nicaragua and the information is false. They also said that the, the fee for the, the, the minimum amount you have to have for residency is $600 a month. I know where they got that from. There's a bunch of fake websites that say that they're all over the place, but none of them are real. None of them are based on anything. The actual number is much higher. It's like 1,000 or 1,200, depending on the thing you're doing. And everyone who's in Nicaragua knows this. This is not hard to get information. It is all over the internet. It's easy to do a few minutes of research and discover there was a $600 number long ago. And that like 10 years ago almost, I can't remember the exact date, it was changed to a different number. And so if you look up sites that are really, really old or just copying things that are really, really old, you see the old number. And if you see sites that have done any effort in the last decade, you see the new number. And does that mean it's the current number? No, you got to check all the time. But you can tell that they just pulled from unofficial sources 10 years old and put up really obviously fake information that the most casual investigation would have turned up as being obviously false. All kinds of information that they have, we can verify is false. The other information we have to assume is even more likely to be false because it's harder to verify. If the things that can be easily verified are verifiably false, what can't easily be verified is essentially guaranteed to at least be not based on anything solid. Maybe that it is correct, but by coincidence, the chances that they had some means of doing that research. Now in their defense, Nomad Capitalist puts in the small print, we have no knowledge of anything. Here's some completely baseless resources that we use to pull this information. So at least they disclose that their sources are worthless, but you have to then look at those resources and know something about them and say, oh, those aren't valid resources. And in many cases, how would you know, right? And in some cases, it could be other governments, right, who are obviously falsifying things. That's a known thing. But if you're not confident in that, you may be like, well, it seems like an official thing and forget that <laughs> Nicaragua is a sovereign country and another country saying things about them means nothing. Uh, so there's even in the most well-known resource that claims to have a huge staff of almost 90 people, has definitely very large income, claims to have worked with all kinds of people. Now, to be fair, they've not claimed to have worked with as many people as I've worked with this year. So the numbers they're working with are really not that large. It's really shockingly small how few people are working with them. Now, of course, they're getting paid and I help people for free. So when you're free, you're a lot more likely to get a lot of people really quickly, right? But it doesn't change the fact that they don't have a large number of people experience. They haven't helped very many people move and they're like the biggest and 
they state that they don't have direct, they're not doing any direct research. It's just people sitting in an office looking at websites, not checking anything, and just repeating stuff because they just put, here's where our source is, so they're not like liable for putting misinformation. They're not claiming to be accurate, they're just claiming to repeat these other sources. Those sources may or may not claim to be accurate, but none of them are official sources, so why bother using them other than they don't think that their customers are very savvy. So this kind of marketing, like I feel like they're going after people who feel very unsure. They're going after people who are very, not aware of the factors that would go into it or, or don't feel that they can just go out and experiment and learn on their own uh, or, or find out what they need. And I think it's, it's understandable that they're trying to make money, right? But I think everyone should be pretty wor worried about people who are trying to make money on relocation, right? For obvious reasons. No one's an expert. Why would someone try to make the tiny amount of money that can be made on this? Is it something they're trying to do casually and it's just a little bit of something on the side? Like that's cool and all, but be really aware of, of where someone is going with this stuff, right? If it's a little bit of extra, you know, that can be fine. Are they really providing you value for what you pay? Is it really stuff you can't find out? Is it really honest information? Uh, it's easy to imagine someone being like, oh, I've traveled the world, here's what I think of different countries. That's super valuable, right? Maybe they have the same kind of feelings that you do and their insights can be useful to you. That's fantastic, right? But is someone gonna charge for that? That had better be a free video or a series of videos um, or, or a podcast or any number of things, but paying for that, because there are unlimited people providing that information already. That, that None of this information that's real is secret. The stuff you have to keep secret is when it's wrong and you're hoping the people that will vet you are not the ones that are, are going to see it, right? That is literally why you would keep this secret because if you took, I guarantee, I'm not gonna say who this is, but if you take this checklist or one of these tools that they have, they have cost of living tools. How do you make a cost of living tool, right? What is the cost of living? Uh, we had this discussion between Paraguay and Nicaragua. No one can tell you. No one really knows. We have some rough comparisons, but we don't really know because where you live in the country varies too much, how you live varies too much, how you shop, all kinds of things. There's so many experiences. Some people living here in Nicaragua are paying $400 for power. Some are paying 80, some are paying 40, some are paying 10, all with air conditioning, all expats, all in similar situations, just enough things different. And some of those things aren't things we can predict. You don't know. But if one person gives a cost of living, they're like, it costs $400. And someone who has a much lower cost is like, well, it can cost $400, but it can cost 40. And then someone else is like, well, it can cost 40. It can cost 10, right? So you, you, until you can at best report on, here's the lowest we've been able to find. Does that mean someone else isn't paying one? Who's gonna be like 10? What's wrong with you? I pay one, right? You don't know. So you can collect information and provide correct information, but what you can't provide is definitive information. No one can. There is no cost of living of different places. So when they're offering cost of living calculators and comparisons, maybe they're offering something really general. Maybe they're doing so in a really honest way. I don't think so, right? The chances are, if they were, it would be public. It'd need be Numbio and all these huge services that do a moderate job. And I'll break some of that down on the talk as well when we go into why there's no information. But those sites are big with tons and tons of resources and they've got essentially nothing in many cases. And so for a, you know two people doing YouTube videos and like, imagine if my wife and I were like, we're gonna provide a cost of living calculator around the world. We're gonna provide a checklist for stuff around. Well, we can tell you about things we've done. We can tell a few friends what they've done. We can you know, guess about something. We're just guessing. Like we've lived in eight countries, been to 40, still travel all the time. Nearly every country that people are super interested in, we've either been in or lived in or been adjacent to, work in. Um, and, and we have offices all over, not for relocation, just for other things. So we have experience all the time in many different countries, both in person and with our employees living there, right? So we get a lot of feedback a lot about a lot of things that even people relocating may not be very familiar with, like detailed banking things in many countries across the region because we're doing more complex banking things in many places. We don't just have a little bit of living in different places. We have business in a lot of countries. So that's you know, it, and I could present that as being really experts on things, but the reality is, is we may be more experts than a lot of people, but we can't provide information to you as if we're experts, because experts don't exist in this space. And that's, we have enough information to tell you, no one has the information. Maybe that's the key. But 
Okay, all this, what I'm asking, what I'm looking for from you guys. I want feedback from you about your questions, about your insecurities. And I mean, I get some of you are like, I don't know if I want to relocate. I don't know if I ever want to move out of my country. I, I get it. Right. But what I mean is, if you are looking to relocate, if you're interested in learning more, where are you hesitant? Where are you struggling to get information? What is that information? Are you struggling with choosing a region of the world? Are you struggling with choosing a country? Are you struggling with choosing a city? Are you struggling with understanding when you should take the next step? Are you confused about what the next step should be? Um, and these things are not, there's not like one path you can follow. Although these courses try to sell, they're literally trying to sell courses to teach you how to move abroad. Um, you just pack up and go, like that's all there is to it. Oh, but I have to sell my stuff. You don't have to sell your stuff, but you could, right? But like, you don't need a course for this stuff. Um, and, and that they think you do either means they think they can sell you on smoke and mirrors, or they had so little idea how to move that they think there's all these things that you need to know, but there really isn't. There's a lot of stuff that might be useful at some point, but it might also not be. And thinking that it might be there could be the stumbling block. Is that what's making you not feel you can do it? Uh, are you struggling with the finances? How are you going to uh, move on? Um, and this one I saw, they're trying to, they have a whole guide on how to work remotely as a, right? And their whole thing, obviously they're making their money scamming foreigners, giving out bad info, pretty much useless information, charging for stuff that should be free. That's their way of making some extra money. I mean, I get if that's what you need to do. If you have no skills, that's what you do. But, you know, it's a, it, the whole thing is a weird approach. And so I'm not mentioning them. I'm sure they're nice people. I'm sure they're struggling financially and trying to figure out what to do, right? I'm sure you're going to find thousands of people who are just like, I have no idea how to, but... You don't want, I have no idea how to make money, to be the source of your advice for careers in relocating, right? That's a terrible setup. So let's talk about that real quickly while your gears, I hopefully, are turning as to, are, you know, I know a whole bunch of you are like, well, we've got everything we need. We're ready. We're just, you know, waiting for our flight. We're just waiting until the house sells. We're just waiting until the kid graduates. You know, some of you have like these, these things. Everything's in motion and you have logical reasons to be waiting and great. Some of you are just finding the channel. Some of you are, are like, what do we do next? And we got to figure that out. If you are going to be looking for advice from someone in this space, you're going to want to make sure of a few things. One, that they have some experience. Not, we moved once and got lucky. It worked for us, so we can tell you how to do it too. It doesn't work that way, right? You're going to want someone who's very intentional in their process. And that doesn't mean that people could be just fall into relocation and do incredibly well. But it means that if that's what happened, the same thing that we get in business, right? It's a very important differentiation between someone getting lucky and someone having a repeatable process that would cause them to have reliably good results. And so many people, if you only relocate once, it's hard to know exactly whether they have a repeatable process. If they're learning from what they did, did they grow and try again? Did they just get lucky the first time? Did they just do a great process and didn't get lucky, worked against the odds the first time, it's very difficult to tell. But in looking at this one particular one that was sent to me, right, they don't have that many years of experience of having done it. They only moved one time. They didn't investigate a number of countries and the whole thing came up. They had an emergency. They decided they had to move very quickly and, and, and people have different reasons for needing to do so. And there's absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, I would encourage you, the moment you find out about relocation being a really great option and it's something that piques your interest, and put that into motion. Start making that happen. At least start really, really researching. You can always stop along the path and be like, okay, we researched, we're getting ready, and then, ooh, nope, there's reasons we don't want to do it. Okay, so don't do it. That's fine. But start taking action. Put things into motion, and, and you'll be going down that path, and you'll learn quickly instead of waiting and feeling like you have to delay for some reason. Procrastination does not behoove you here. So it's fine to suddenly find out and be like, we're going to do this. And that doesn't make you a better relocator. You want to do the best thing for your life. But in being a relocation advisor, you don't want someone who did the best thing for their life. You want someone who put in a ton of time researching, who knows how to research, who has a broad scope of having tried things, who's gotten things wrong, who's gotten things right, um, or gotten a lot of things right over and over again, who has a process that makes sense, that understands how they got to the right answer. And not only are you looking for someone who has a lot of experience, you're looking for a lot of someone who has a lot of types of experiences, because if you only have experience in one country, if I only ever moved to Nicaragua, 
my relocation advice would be pretty bad because I wouldn't be able to tell you how it compares to a bunch of other places. Is it easy to move to Nicaragua? I don't know because I never moved anywhere else. Oh, that's not useful, right? But I've moved to eight countries. Oh, was this one easy? Yeah, way easier than any of the others I lived in. Oh, okay, that's not a huge sampling, but it's something. There's, you know, it's not completely isolated. With z complete isolation, there's nothing to work with. Look at that information we got from that Paraguay relocation scam artist, right? It was completely false. They had nothing to compare against, got everything wrong, did not, you know, the, even their own information was self-conflicting. Um, and then every bit of information they said, just like Nomad Capitalist, everything you can verify was verifiably false. And so you have to assume they're just making things up because they don't have the basis for it. Uh, and so those, you, you need to look for these things and have this expectation of to be an advisor, you got to have this really strong basis uh, for everything. And you also need to be wary of anyone, especially if they only went to one place, who ended up in a really popular place, right? So some places that Americans just go to, Canadians too, Mexico, maybe Guatemala, definitely Costa Rica, definitely Panama, Colombia, Ecuador. These are the countries that North Americans go to when they don't do their research. That does not mean that they don't go to them when they do do their research, right? That's not what I said. But if you do no research, these are the set of countries you're going to end up in. Why? Because Americans and Canadians are sold these all the time as being easy, obvious places. And they'll be told it's off the beaten path. It's a you didn't think about it location. It's of course you thought about it, right? It's like going to a cell phone store and saying, what are my cell phone, what, what would be the best cell phone for me? And they go, uh, this one thing we sell. And you're going, wow, uh, that's great. You had, you just happen to sell the thing. No, they don't happen to sell the thing. They're selling you something, right? A salesman took advantage of your naivete. And that is very likely to happen. And this is what we see in Costa Rica. Every time we make a video about Costa Rica and we talk about what things are life there, that so much of that is based on so much of the fundamentals behind why Costa Rican expat life is the way that it is, is because it has a giant number of Americans and some Canadians who didn't do their homework. A few of them did their homework, and even after doing their homework, determined that Costa Rica was right for them. Those people are generally extremely successful there, but the majority of people who go there aren't very successful, and a key reason for that is because they didn't do their research and ended up in Costa Rica as a knee-jerk reaction. They simply accepted the default when going into a sales channel. Oh. I'm looking for what's the thing most likely to be easily sold to an American. Costa Rica, good, I'll take it. No one checked anything, right? And so if you find someone who's living in one of those countries specifically, and of course other places will also be like that, like if you find people who are in Vietnam or Thailand especially, really high chances they are there not because they did research, not because it's the best thing for them, because they didn't do any research, and that's the default location when going to Southeast Asia. Uh, Philippines comes up again. It doesn't make those places bad. They're often the default for good reasons. They have a whole bunch of good things, but rarely are the truly good places the defaults. Acceptable places will be defaults, not completely terrible places, but not the best ones. Places that are not the cheapest, places that are not the safest, and by the nature of being a default, we'll guarantee it can't be the cheapest or the safest. Those things would go away as soon as it became the default. And so when you find people who went to those things, chances are they didn't do their homework, especially if they went during a popular time for it. And they may love the place, but so often when you see people doing this, it's, oh, we love it. Where else have you been? Well, nowhere or they've settled and now they feel they have to say they love it, but they didn't go other places first, right? So look for these things as well. These are, these are big flags that they, they are very likely not bringing with them the experience of good decision-making processes. It doesn't guarantee that they don't, but it is unlikely that someone with very little experience hasn't put in the time and effort, not thinking about it intentionally, and ended up in the default locations that you would easily end up in if you didn't do your homework, those are not good selling points. So those are just some warning signs that I noticed in this particular talk where there's nothing to show that these people are experts in relocation in any way whatsoever. Nothing in their history, track record, amount of experience, or where they ended up suggests that they have any information more than any random person who just showed up in a new country would have. And of course, all their information is secret, which is exactly what you would expect if they don't have good information. So they've backed it up by making it look even more like what their public profile looks like is true.
So what I want to know, what information would you hope to find if you were to buy a packet, get a course, or uh, go attend a lecture on moving abroad? What is it? And I want a lot of responses on this. I want a lot of answers because because let's build this stuff up and get it out for free for everyone because these are not the kind of things that should be held back and these are not the kind of things that should not be vetted. People who have moved abroad and have good logic for why something works or doesn't should be part of the conversation because nobody even me, who has moved around a lot, has done this for a long time, put in a ton of research, and ended up in a non-default uh, non location. I, I can't have that kind of broad information. Nomad capitalists, team of 87 relocation professionals, have no clue about moving abroad. Not even slightly. They can't even carry on reasonable conversations or put up their own website and have it vetted. So if they can't do it, there's no way I can do it. Right? We're not tearing them down. I mean, we are, but we're not tearing them down. We're pointing out that the biggest, most affluent organization doing this known in the world isn't even scratching the surface. So the importance that is guaranteed that you need a lot of people in an open community vetting information and providing their own insights can't be overstated. That is so important because if someone's like, well, what about Paraguay? Well, you need people who live in Paraguay, and hopefully people who've lived other places than Paraguay, to provide information. What is the weather really like, right? Everyone says Nicaragua's hot. Well, yes, it is. But when you live there long term, you realize why people are misstating how hot it is. Oh, that's because you're always coming in winter, you're having this sudden adjustment to the temperature, you feel it's a lot hotter than it actually is. 84 isn't actually all that hot, but when, when tourists come here from winter in Canada, they feel like 84 is super hot and they report it as like it's like 100 degrees, but it's not. But people coming from Phoenix, who rarely come to Nicaragua, right? If you were to come in summer from Phoenix, you'd be like, Nicaragua's really cold, I can barely handle it. That would give you a different perspective. So understanding some of those things, you need someone on the ground. What's the weather really like in Paraguay? I can't go look at a website and get really good information information about that. It'll give me something. Give me a starting point. But someone on the ground will be able to explain why it does certain things. But yeah, it rains every day, but for three minutes at exactly noon. Or it sprinkles, but just a few drops all throughout 24 hours a day, you never even notice. Like, oh, that's so... You can't tell that from these, these reports, right? You need that firsthand. And like, what's interesting to do? Oh, well, this is the big city, but it's not fun. This is the cool city. No one knows it, right? Go into Bolivia. Like La Paz, everyone knows it. Why? Because all the tour guides are written for there. But where's really interesting? Cochabamba. What? Oh, until you actually go, you have no idea. And are there cool villages? I certainly don't know. That would take a lot of time of exploring Bolivia to figure that out. You need people who are there on the ground providing that information. And so you need a community. You need a community that is public because unless it's public, you don't know. You don't have a good way to know when something is incorrect. You don't have people calling you out on misinformation, and you don't have the broad scope of information that is needed. So if there's a resource we need to find or create in order to have a good community for communicating and having all this information, whether it's around Latin America, around Nicaragua, around the world, let's figure that out. Why not put this together? There is no reason that anyone needs to be paying for this stuff, especially when the only way to get good information is to get it from the public space, right? Like, yeah, I can provide my little piece of things, but I need about 10,000 of you guys to also provide a little bit of your information. And when we put that all together, that could be, yeah, an expert community, I guess. Um, but without that, you just can't have it. So if, if people are holding that back, we got to figure out ways to make that public because this is stuff that people need and it shouldn't be stuff that people are fighting to get access to. So thanks for joining me. Definitely leave your comments below. I want to know what you think about things, where you have, all that stuff. Answer. Please send in some videos. That would be so fantastic. And uh, as always, if you'd like to support the work that we're doing purely voluntarily, you can do super likes here on, on uh, YouTube. You can do uh, buy me a coffee at, we'll put it on the screen, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That is like Patreon comes directly to me, helps support what we do here. Like, subscribe, tell someone about the show, get the word out there, and I will see all of you tomorrow.